I'll tell you, I don't know if it sounds like it, folks, but we have been chugging along here at what feels like, to your host anyway, a brick neck pace. And just I haven't had time to breathe here. That's okay. I'm not, I'm not complaining. It's good, actually. And we have another hour left of it. Rush Limbaugh, the EIB Network. And the Limbaugh Institute, Advanced Conservative Studies. Great to have you. Phone number if you want to join us. 800-282-2882. The email address, lrushbo at eibnet.com. Mr. Snurdly just said something very interesting to me. He said that uh, he, he's been spending time since Mandela died giving people the five-minute short version history of Africa, the continent of Africa. One of the things that stands out, not just about Africa, if I can expand upon something he said. He said, you look at the British and their colonialism. He said, that, you know, in, in Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. He said that colonialism was a, is a distasteful thing, but the sad reality is, is that every place that the British colonized was better off under colonialism than they are today after it, after the British were kicked out. Rhodesia is an example. India, some might even say. Conrad Black, who, uh, latest book, Flight of the Eagle, I recommended uh, strenuously on this program, wrote a piece, National Review Online, on this very phenomenon that while British colonialism has its detractors and it's not something that you want to promote, Obama hated it, for example, still does. Uh, the fact remains that in every country where the British colonized, there's some exceptions, but not many. These countries are far worse off today than they were under British rule. And Rhodesia is one example. And Rhodesia was a jewel. It was a crown jewel of uh, Southern Africa. Today, it's just... It's led by a communist, Robert Mugabe, and the place is practically dead. And so then the the question, I get this a lot, by the way, when I start telling people about my definition of American exceptionalism, particularly young people will ask me, well, why hasn't what happened in America happened anywhere else in the world? And you know, it's really a great question. It's a great question when you understand that young people today are not taught that what happened in America was anything special. They're taught just the opposite. 